you want to be clear. All right, so now I'm going to sketch. So I'm just using a regular brush. I made it pressure sensitive. We're going to be using brushes later for things like digital coloring, digital painting, digital inking. Um, I'm going to take its opacity down to about 80. And I'm just going to start drawing my nine squares, three on three, with space in between. These spaces are called gutters. If this was a comic book, which a storyboard looks very much like a comic book, it just all has the same shaped panel, then these gutters would represent passing of time, right, from one image to the next. So what we're showing is a sequence of images that shows a passing of time within one setting, one scene, one time and place. We can make this these nine frames last as long as we want. We can have them last from sun, sunrise uh, to the next sunrise. You know, so the transformation could be the sun moving through the sky and then setting and then the moon coming up and then setting and then the sun rising again. That would be a transformation of setting. What I'm going to use is my character which is my bird. So I'm just going to introduce with my first frame character X. That's my character. And I'm just going to draw him just this way. Super simple. It's my character. Right. And then I'm also going to establish this is the storyboarding term for it, storytelling term, my setting. So an establishing shot is when you show your setting. And my setting is going to be this fast food landscape that I did as assignment one for my other class, just because I think they're, they're nicely contrasted. My character, my setting. I don't need to worry about resolution because GIF animations are made for screen. So we're going to make these to be eight by eight inches by 150 pixels per inch. That's about a quarter of the size of the print resolution we made our assets. Okay, so I've introduced my character in the setting. It's just going to open up with my character being there. So what is my transformation going to be? And how do I start that? This is where my inspiration comes in. I'm inspired by Terry Gilliam. I really like this one where this hand comes in and like lifts this image and reveals these teeth, changes it. So I thought I'm going to use this hand because it's this beautiful, I'll steal this asset, it's this beautiful uh, hand colored photograph that Terry Gilliam uses a lot for a hand. I'm going to cut that hand out and use it as an asset and I'm going to have that hand come in and grab my creature. So how do I show that in my storyboard? Each of these should be a significant action, right? So this is introducing a new character, really. Introducing the hand. And so that's what I put. INT character Y. I'll just say hand. And then it's actually going to grab my character, character X, my creature, here. So in these first frames, these first three frames, this is the beginning of my story, I'm going to have to show that hand smoothly coming in. Not there at the beginning, it gets introduced. This is called a delayed introduction. You can delay introduction lots of things in visual storytelling. I could have my character, my initial creature character, be a delayed inter introduction. I could start with just an establishing shot of the setting and then show my character kind of jumping in from one of the sides. That would be a delayed introduction. I could have a delayed introduction of my setting. I could show my character just on a white background, then have the setting slowly fade in. But none of those is a transformation, right? We're just getting to know all the players. Now, the middle frames, this is where the interesting thing happens. The transformation has to begin. 
So I'm going to show the hand pulling on the head, right? So that introduces conflict. And instead of the bird lifting up, it's going to break at the shoulders. And it's going to start to have this little accordion kind of bellows start to spool out from it. So this is where you sometimes need notes and little, like, in storyboarding, arrows would be camera direction, but this is an internal direction. So this is what's called an action. So ATC, not for an act, but for an action. A bird or a character X stretches. And then the hand's going to come up. Still holding it, and we're going to see there are these kind of accordion bellows, and the wings are going to stay where they are. And then by the end, really I could do three frames to show that full extension. So maybe even this frame, I'm just seeing the very fingertips and the heads up here, and then we have the full extension. So it's getting longer and longer. And the only thing I don't like about digital sketching is I'm terrible at writing <laughs> with this stylus. All right. So in the end, this is where you show the consequences of the change or you, and you are hoping to set it back to reset. So I want to get this to end at a place where it seamlessly begins again. So now the hand is going to go down, just like my inspiration. Like, don't overthink it. The hand's going to go down and start putting the head back. And so I'm going to show it going down now. And then down very forcefully. So it's going to go down faster than it pulls up. And then the hand's just going to leave and let go. Notice my setting is what's called a backdrop setting. It is not a dynamic element. It does not play a role in the transformation. It's just behind everything. If I want to make mist moving and stuff, I can make it more dynamic. But that's just adding complexity. This is the core story. So this is what my storyboard sketch is. This is the beginning. This is the middle. This is the end. And you can see clearly how it sets to reset. You also don't want to waste your ninth frame just with a picture of your first frame, right? Each frame should be helping the story make sense. Okay, now I have my storyboard sketch. So I'm going to save that. I'll save it as a JPEG, and I'm going to use my name. Some of you are still not saving your work with your names. I recommend it. And this is a rough storyboard sketch. It's not a finished storyboard. But I'm going to show you how we can animate this, just so you can see how the animation tools work in Photoshop. You do not need to do this, but this would be turning your rough storyboard sketch into what's called an animatic. Okay, this is how I do it. I'm going to flatten the image. Well, I'm not even going to flatten it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a square. I'm going to hold down shift, use my rectangular marquee, make a perfect square. And I'm going to duplicate each time. Now, one trick for doing this is once you've made your perfect square, I need to check contiguous here, you can make a template. I needed to flatten it first. So I'm going to make a perfect square by holding down shift. That goes around one of my frames, right? This is one way to do it. And I'm going to fill that square on a new layer 
and I'll just fill it with middle gray, like an overlay layer. We learned about non-destructive overlay layers last class. Now I'm going to duplicate that nine times. So I have nine copies. Command-J is how I duplicate. Okay, now I'm going to use that to select. I'm going to have contiguous turned on. I'm going to select. And I'm going to duplicate that selection. Then I don't need this template anymore. Next, I have another one. I can move it over. I'm going to use it to select, so it's always the exact same square. And then I move the selection down. I can move the selection up a little bit, as long as it's the same square, and I duplicate. And so now you see I have two squares. Next, I'll use that template again. I actually didn't need to make duplicates of all of them. I just need to move them around. Put it here. I'm going to select it. Use that to duplicate my third frame. And again. So a lot of animation is kind of drudgery <laughs> and getting the format matched and making sure things line up but you'll see how it all comes together it's putting all of these things in the same shape on the same format to control the storytelling And I can do it even without turning the layers off to show you anymore, just so I can speed it up a little bit. So I'm just using that template to select. And last frame. So I'll have nine squares. Ah, I'm going to use the template to select. You're going to see very quickly in animation, you're going to build a lot of layers. So this is our final compositing project because we really have to control a lot of assets, a lot of layers. Okay, now I can get rid of all my little templates. And now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine layers. Good. Now I'm going to use my guides and I'm going to squish all those layers like they're a flip book into one corner. And I'm going to go ahead and use auto select layer. I'm going to put the first one down, then the second one behind that. And if you want me to do it in order, just because it's more pleasing, I can do it that way. The last one, lining it up on the side, number nine, number eight, like pages in a book, number seven, number six, number five, number four, number three, number two, number one. Bring my guides around. Should all be nicely squared up and match. And if they don't, we're going to see it in the animation very quickly. I can preview the animation just by turning on and off these eyeballs. And sure enough, this one isn't quite lined up. There we go. This one isn't quite lined up. And this one isn't quite lined up. Or actually, my end ones weren't lined up. 
So 